you might be expecting a talk on communication to start with the power of language or choose your words wisely, but that's not where I'll begin. You see, in the weeks of gut-wrenching, heartbreaking and soul-destroying grief that followed the unexpected and instant death of my youngest brother on his motorbike, the communication was anything but carefully chosen words. For me, it was sobbing and wailing. It was shrieking and screaming. It was collapsing and catching. It was also shoulders to lean on, meals being prepared for us, dishes being cleaned and beds being made, the writing and singing of songs and the long, heavy silences. We grew up in a home with an open door policy. So too it was in grieving. Family and friends coming from far and wide to mourn and support each other through despair again. Four months prior, our father had died from a brain tumour. My brother had flown back to Australia from Canada to be with us as a family, nursing dad through palliative care at home. With our sibling gone now too. Mum had lost her life partner and the youngest of four kids within the space of a few months. I share this story with you, not for pity, nor to play a violin. I share this story with you to connect. Grief is something you already know, or one day surely will. The word communication comes from the Latin noun communicatio, which means a sharing, and the Latin verb communicare, which means to make common. In our modern world of identity politics, public shaming and cancel culture, where more and more people are shouting at each other across the digital divides of difference, determined not only to prove their point, but to destroy their enemies in the process. It seems, sadly, for many, communication is becoming a forgotten art. In the meantime, the biggest and most pressing problems for humanity, such as climate change, pandemics and inequality, are things we very much have in common. Like death and grief, these things we all share. And despite the differences people identify with and fight tooth and nail for, we are very literally all in this together. And if we don't come together to communicate, collaborate and create global solutions, we will run out of time and then nothing much will matter at all. It is communication that enables us to traverse diversity and collectively combine. It is communication that allows us to coordinate across countries and navigate global adversity. It is only with communication we can share an idea, move beyond the fear and then manifest it into reality. It is communication that is the pathway to nurturing and fostering our closest and most intimate relationships. And these, our deepest connections, play directly into the quality of our personal lives. In the absence of communication, there is only disconnect and distance. There can be no communion, no resolution, no solution. In that void, we perish. I have some ideas I believe are worth sharing. Ideas on how to preserve and evolve this most vital human skill. Ideas that, if spread, can reignite that which I believe we deeply already know. One, open-mindedness matters. Two, consideration matters. Three, teaching the next generation matters. Open-mindedness matters. In our ego's desperate plight, to fight for identity survival, to defend itself and its precious ideologies, it is blinkered and closed, blindly opposed to any other perspectives. If we can remember that it's completely fine to loosen our tight grip on the way we think things should be, that actually there's a plethora of alternative possibilities and perhaps sometimes more functional ways. If we can remember 
to open our minds, we can find each other in communication. Do you remember the times you've lost yourself in the heated emotion of an argument? Was the immediate outcome ever resolve or did reconciliation only evolve in the calmer waters of the post-storm sea? Loosen your grip, open your mind, remain curious and breathe. There be easier ways forward. Consideration matters. Consideration of context, intent, timing and delivery, interpersonal consideration, cultural consideration. In the days before I walked across the border from India to Pakistan as a backpacker in the 90s, I went to a tailor and purchased traditional shawal kameez. I learnt to say, assalamu alaikum, and a handful of Urdu words. This simple consideration and respect of difference opened up an experience of remarkable hospitality, connection and communication otherwise unlikely to have occurred. On a public bus in the remote northern mountains of the Hindu Kush, I had a conversation with a university student, a devout Muslim and young father. He was open to me, a dreadlocked, bearded Aussie, dressed in his style and making an effort. His English was much better than my Urdu, and I will always remember his analogy to exemplify our commonality. He simply said, if we cut your skin here, and we cut my skin here. We have the same coloured blood. You and me, we are the same, he said. Consideration can lead to connection through what we have in common. From this foundation, we can break bread together, celebrate diversity and broaden our respective horizons. I may not agree with everything you say, but I promise to consider your perspective before making up my mind. Teaching the next generation matters. It's easy to feel like what we do as an individual won't really make a difference, to think, I can't change the world. But when there's a groundswell of individuals sharing good ideas, movements can form. And with education, generational change takes place. I'm calling out to parents and teachers, to uncles and aunties, to elders within communities, to schools and universities, please dedicate some resource, your time and intent, to show our young people more functional ways to communicate. It's not too late and every piece of guidance contributes. Perhaps our future high schools have classes of conscious communication in their curriculum. Let's teach our teens to pause and not react, to take a breath, Listen and then respond. Let's teach them there's a wide world of ways and not only one path. Let's ignite their cultural curiosity and remind them that every single other human on the planet needs oxygen and water, food and shelter, is nourished in authentic connection, feels the pain of loss and one day too will die. We are the same in many ways, you and I. Parenting isn't easy. I know that to be true. I've had some of my finest and ugliest moments as a father. Sometimes it's felt like my most gallant attempts at conscious communication have fallen on deaf ears. As I watch my teenage sons becoming young men in front of me, I can only hope my efforts in communication with them positively influence the way they move through life. Open your mind to points of view. Consider others are trying to work it out too and pay this forward as you move on through. My hope is that we, us humans, can move away from the dangerous distractions of bickering online about difference of opinions that in the grand scheme of things don't really matter. That we can free ourselves from the algorithmic feedback loops the social media echo chambers capitalising off our predisposition for confirmation bias. My hope is that we can evolve 
to refocus on the things that really matter. The biggest, most imminent and important problems are problems for us all, not just some. And the solutions will only be found when we work together, harnessing the power of diversity through more conscious communication. Thank you.